Hello everyone. Wow. I didn't think I'd, I didn't think I'd be this emotional being up here. But um, granted, I am the kind of boy, someday man, who cries while watching up. Um, although while we, were, while we were going through the presentations, the great ones up here, uh, I started legitimately tearing up while I was sitting in the front seat here. And as I saw the memories that I shared with these guys sitting up here, um, whether it was with Michael Park with his pictures of uh, whitewater rafting and knowing that I was somewhere in one of those photos that wasn't shown on screen. <laughs> and, um, and also with uh, Siraj Patel, who was some of those photos in his choir photos when we were in Spain together. When we went to Madrid and Barcelona, we sang in beautiful places and I started choking up when I saw those photos. So um, I had to break some professionalism and give him a little fist bump while that was going on. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I need to thank my family for being here and I have a lot of family here today. <laughs> uh, there's my mom, my dad, my beautiful brother sitting in the red flannel, and um, the people who make uh, my family being here possible. Uh, my brother's social workers, uh, Sal and Albert, sitting with my family up here. Speaking of Up, there's this one scene in the beginning of Up, no, at the end of Up, rather, where uh, there's these Boy Scouts, who, they're not called Boy Scouts, but it's strongly implied that they're Boy Scouts up there. And the Boy Scouts are standing up there, and they're standing up here like this, and the boy, and the fathers are going up there, giving them these like crazily named badges. And you're like, huh, these are little kids, and they're getting these badges, and you're wondering, do they actually know how to do that? And I think there's a little bit of a little perception, at least on my end, to that sometimes Boy Scouts seem, seem a little archaic or not really relevant to the modern world. But as I think back to the experiences I've had in this organization, I think that can be any further from the truth. When I was in my Boy Scout Court of Honor for my board of review, they asked me they, they asked me the dreaded question that I was anticipating but was no way was ready for. They said, "Why do you think you deserve to be an Eagle Scout?" And I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> that, that's hard. That's a big deal." And I said, "I said, um, uh, in all due respect, because I believe I've earned it." And it said a little, it felt a little crazy while I was saying it, but then I, I said again. In my honest opinion, I believe there are two parts to becoming a true and honest Eagle Scout. The first one is doing all the paperwork and meeting all the selected criteria of making sure you do everything on that paper, which is absolutely important. It's proof that you put work into it. You can't, you can't um, substitute that for other things. That's your hard work. That's our hard work up here. And the second part is internalizing the values that Boy Scout has. It's understanding the law, the oath, and knowing exactly what each of those words mean and making it a part of yourself. And something that those laws have taught me is that every word has absolute meaning to it. And I remember thinking of, back to my English class, those, wall, those words all over the wall that say big fancy words like verisimilitude. I'm like, what does that mean? And it means something like your believability or truthfulness. And I think of the first word of the Boy Scout law that says, a scout is trustworthy. And I think of that word, and I think of all these words, and each one, they're not fancy vocabulary words, but they're absolutely important. And I'll think as I go through decision making in my daily life, and I'll think, the Boy Scout law, is this in line with the Boy Scout oath? And that's what this organization has done for me. So, this organization has done beautiful things, and I think of all the experiences I've had in it, and with the merit badges I've gained in it, as many as there are, of course, they all have meaning. And there's this one experience that really stuck out to me. It's when I was getting my personal personal management merit badge. And so we're going through the packet of all the vocab terms of financial terms, and I think how long. Um, and before going into this, I want to be an economist when I grow up. And for those of you who know me, I really want to be an economist when I grow up. Um, <laughs> and we're going through the packet, and my, um, my advisor says, so what's a hedge fund? And I think, oh my gosh. I know it's on the paper, but I don't know what a hedge fund is. And of course, he defined it to me, and then I was thinking, well, I know it's like money put together, something like that. But after that experience, I thought, there's another word, dilettante. A dilettante is someone who goes into, who goes into a focus or a subject and says, I like this thing, I absolutely love it, it's like one of my favorite things, but they don't actually put the effort into owning it and then making it theirs and making it become part of themselves because of their hard work and taking ownership of it. And that's a really big thing that Boy Scouts has done for me. And as I see the adult leaders who have made it possible for me to bring all of us up here to this stage, I think there's, yeah, we have titles, we have things like that, 
put the values that these uh, that adults have put into our lives and break it past all the busy schedules they have to really bring something of value to these kids in these communities. It's a beautiful thing. So I thank them for that. Um, and to conclude, I would like to give my mentor pin to my best friend, and his name is William Kim. So William Kim, thank you. In the words of that guy from Fast and Furious, he's part of my family. So, thank you.